What up, homeboys? So Blizzard announced that they are creating a group of players to give them feedback called the Community Council. And I know what you're thinking. This sounds very similar, very reminiscent of the Twitch Trust and Safety Council. And I must say, actually, that the parallels are showing. I know I am a cynical douche, okay? But in my mind, there is no freaking way this is not a publicity stunt. And you can say that because, first of all, Blizzard already gets all their feedback and more than they could ever ask for, for free. You cannot walk into Twitter, you cannot walk into the forums, you cannot walk into Reddit, even YouTube, like yours truly, subscribe by the way. There's always somebody giving you fe feedback about the game and telling you why the game sucks. Let's take a look at what they are trying to do. I have the official announcement right here. Greetings, citizens of Azeroth. The World of Warcraft community is second to none with the passion, love and excitement you should all show to the game. Player feedback impacts all aspects of the game and with such a wide range of opinions, playstyles and interests out there, gathering and understanding feedback is more important than ever. To help further our efforts in this area, we are introducing the WOW Community Council. This program will add another venue for communication be between players and WOW developers. Our goal is to gather more detailed fi feedback sorry, on all aspects of World of Warcraft from players around the world with a wide range of backgrounds and interests. Here's how it works. Submissions are open to any player interested in taking part of the program. Once players are selected, they will be given the ability to post in a new discussion forum that is publicly visible to everyone. By the way, keep this public thing in mind, we're going to talk about this later. In this new forum, we will ask members to share their experiences and perspectives on anything in the game, and some topics may be started by Blizzard developers and community managers. Responses and updates from Blizzard will be posted there so they can easily be discussed by the entire community. A private discussion will also be set up for council members to encourage direct interaction between members. This is, I think this one is funny because I know I've been told that uh, the, big, the big content creators of WoW already have a Discord to talk with Blizzard publicly. Whether Blizzard listens or not, well, we will see. <laughs> Probably not, but you know, the, this is already a thing. This thing right here, this was already a thing. Separate conversations between smaller groups of members and Blizzard developers will be encouraged to ensure players with different ex differing perspectives are being heard. This may take the form of live chats between council members and Go and WoW and World of Warcraft devs. You know, kinda just like a focus group. Hmm. So they are doing, gonna do focus groups. That's what the focus groups. I don't know if you ever uh, did any marketing at all, if you ever heard of it, but it's one of the ways that companies check their products. They get a, a, a sample of a few people and they make them talk to each other. And then they, you make them make a decision on what they think about the product. They are trying to simulate what the community, what the public will do when they are in a group. Because, you know, what people, funnily enough, what people think when they are in, in next to other people and when they are not next to other people is wildly different. Uh, sheep, you may call them, but everybody does it, okay? We are all human. Here's a, here's a part that is also cool here. Please note, this program is focused on sharing current and past game experiences. It will not, I repeat, it will not provide access to unannounced game information. So this shows us right here that the people in the council will not even be given access to like patches when they are developing. So you know... How good can their feedback can their feedback be if they're gonna give feedback on a patch that has been out for a month and you know what can you change after the patch has come out, you know? So you know, if they were actually interested in hearing from them uh, and getting honest feedback, why not give them that? 
I mean, that, that's a red flag in there. What can I say? Okay, so these people will have no power whatsoever. They are just going to be a glorified focus group. And Blizzard uh, knows that. The part that I think is really funny is that these discussions will be public. Okay, guys. I'm going to tell you why I think this is really interesting. Let me remind you of a little story of what happened last year. Twitch, the website, did a very similar PR stunt. And like the American company that they are, had to fill certain diversity quotas and they decided to put this particular individual on their version of the community council that they called the trust and safety council the name is ferociously Steph, and this particular individual pretty much instantly got high on the quote unquote power that comes with having your name to show up in a piece of paper and this particular individual proceeded to dispense some rather controversial opinions like this. I think a lot of you gamers are actually white supremacists. Sorry. Just a fact of how I feel. And the community, oh boy, the community didn't like this at all. And why am I bringing this up? Well, this particular individual got chased out of Twitch with many different forms of harassment. Of course, mandatory disclaimer, do not harass people. Harassing people is wrong. I cannot believe I got to tell you that it's wrong. But that aside, my point is that when they put people into these positions to give opinions on the game, what do you think is going to happen to the people that say an opinion that the community doesn't like? They are going to get flooded with threats and, and probably will get doxxed and God knows what they are going to do. If they really had the intention of hearing people's honest opinions, they would not have made this thing public. And Blizzard, by the way, if a year from now something messed up happens to one of the members of the council, I will hold you accountable for it. You know how the internet works and you are putting people in a prime position to provoke them. This is not gonna end well. I do not care how much you publicly denounce harassment if you are putting people in danger i will not give you a pass on this good pr will not be paid with lives and that is also a reason that i would never sign up for that thing it only takes one delusional insane insane guy to think that i am the reason that the game sucks and i will go the way of john lennon i am not kidding because it has happened before i can already predict how this is gonna go and how tone deaf this will all be because Eon Hasikostas actually has already did an interview with a so-called game journalist that is more interested in writing his nuts and giving him softball questions than doing his damn job. I will read an excerpt of this interview made by Mike Minodi posted on VertuBeatVentureBeat.com sorry and I will put the link on the description. Not because I respect them, but because that's just the courtesy that you have to do. Okay, so the interviewer says, You mentioned making the, the team more diverse. Can you talk more about that effort? Now, Eon, this is something that has been a goal of ours for years. We have a number of women leaders, people of color across the team. These are areas that we continue to look for a team that represents the players we want to play our game. Part of why diversity is so important is that I and we as a team firmly believe that it makes a better game, makes a better product. We are trying to make a game that is not for a niche audience. We are making a game that is played by millions of people around the world of all genders, ethnicities, sexual orientations, backgrounds in general. To better understand and have a connection with that range of perspectives, we want a team with that same range of perspectives. Okay, by the way, for the three women that watch my video, <laughs> I don't care what race or gender you are. If you are part of a minority and you want to join the gaming industry, great for you. I support you with all my heart. The problem I have with this is that, is that if you're going to choose people based on diversity, trying to meet some weird quota, you will end up recruiting people that may not have the, the best interest on the game. We have seen time and time again 
the latest few years, people in companies that seem to have more interest in pushing their political agendas than they have interest in doing their damn job. And if you think this is gonna make people forget about the lawsuit and the terrible things that you have done to women, let me tell you this is only gonna backfire, Mr. Eon Hasikostas. But let's assume this is not the case. I mean, look at this dude, doesn't he inspire confidence? I'm sure they mean well. So what if they actually choose people that know about the game and actually play it and have valid opinions? Well, what do you think is gonna happen when the entire council is gonna tell you to put Master Luke back in the game and you in typical Eon Hasikosta's fashion will refuse? You're gonna have people that you said you were gonna listen to telling you to do something that the community wants and you're gonna have to step out in front of everybody and say no. This is not even a good PR stunt. This is only gonna make you look terrible. Even the 15 year old PR intern in the company can see this backfiring from a mile away. This is gonna either make you look bad or it's gonna be so irrelevant. It's gonna garner so little attention that it will not have any effect at all. By the way, by the way, uh, side note here. We have all seen the viral video of Asmongold getting rejected from the program. I am not trying to tell you that Asmongold should or should not be in the program. That is not really something that I wish to cast an opinion on. But isn't it a huge red flag that Blizzard cannot be bothered to give the face of World of Warcraft a better response than no response posted? Because that's what they given. Your, your appeal has re been rejected, no response posted. That's what the biggest influencer, the biggest opinion creator of your game, Gap. What do you think the normal people are gonna, are gonna get? We don't stand a freaking chance. That is how little Blizzard cares about this thing. So I am asking you, why should you as the player care about this thing? It's a joke, alright? At best, it's a terrible PR stunt and at worst, it's gonna put people in serious danger. There is no winning from this, and definitely not a win for the community. Anyways guys, we have a new line of merch coming out. If you wanna support the channel, if you wanna just be the carrier of the swag, the carrier of the drip, please click on the link on the description. We have hoodies, we have t-shirts, we have mugs, we have mouse pads, whatever you want, we got it. We got a little something for everybody. We got a little something for the boys. We got a little something for the ladies. We got a little something for the alliance and we got a little something for the horde. So what are you waiting for? We do not have donations enabled on this channel, but if you want to support the channel with a smaller amount, we have also added a sticker for only $3. I will still appreciate any and all support for the channel, of course. But thanks for watching, if you like this video please subscribe and hit the notification bell for we got a lot more coming. Be a good boy, behave and have a great day.